Atletico Madrid have never won the Champions League. That's something that surprises me a hell of a lot. So today, we're going to be rebuilding them into Champions League winners. And it would be way too easy to do this as our Spanish money will rebuild. So simply today, we're going to have some great fun. We're going to sign some amazing wonder kids. We're going to sign some older players that are simply fantastic that we never really get to sign because of the rules we set on the channel. So today, we're rebuilding Atletico Madrid to be the best team in the world while having a lot of fun. Now, first of all, of course, we have gone ahead and simulated to the end of the current season because we're going to keep things as realistic as possible. So a fourth place finish just behind Girona on uh, games ahead. Each other is how it's done in Spain rather than goal difference heads ahead. So Girona must have beat us twice in the season or just have a better overall record. Real Madrid with runaway winners at 91 points, Barcelona in second. But the important thing is that we have Champions League football this season upcoming, which is great. I do not want to leave the Champions League of Atlético Madrid that would be incredibly embarrassing. Uh, the Champions League, I went this season with semi-finals by uh, Inter Milan, which is very decent. Spanish Cup, semi-final by Sevilla. And Super Cup, semi-final by Real Madrid. Of course, the goal is to win every single one of them in this rebuild. At Real Madrid, I've also never won the Spanish division three times in a row. So that's something I want to try and tick off as well. We're going to do this for five years. We're going to be building an absolute super team. So I think far, uh, three league titles in a row makes sense, as well as winning their very first Champions League. And you can see that the tactic I have gone ahead and created. Now, I would like to play something of Letico Madrid that they similar play in real life. And throughout the transition of this rebuild, move into a more tiki-taka and fast-paced system. This was actually a request of a viewer. So if you do have any requests for rebuilds in the future, get them in the comments down below. Because just like this one, you could get a video coming up on the channel soon. But yeah, this is an absolutely fantastic idea. They play a very defensive five-back style of system right now. What I'm looking to try and do is build this team from being a five-back system. This first season, we're making it more of a, a ball-playing five-back system. And as we progress through the years, I don't want to use a 4-2-3-1. Maybe a tiki-taka 4-1-2-1-2 or a 4-3-3. Something a little bit different using different roles like Trek Batistas and inverted wing-backs and deep-blowing playmakers in DM. Things should be very, very fun. We've got lots of money to spend this season. I mean, £25 million, but a whole host of players which have a lot of value, which we can certainly go ahead and sell for that sort of money as well. So this should be a very fun rebuild. So get yourself some popcorn, strap yourselves in, and let's get in some silence with Atletico Madrid. Straight away then, I'm looking to shake things up and sell some of the older players. So Rodrigo de Paul has left to Barcelona for £37.5 million. Jao Felix has left to Al Hilal for just £21 million. But after his poor spell at Barcelona on FM, he has gone for a very cheap fee, but I think it's the most realistic thing to do. And Nahuel Molina has left to Arsenal for £29 million. Javi Galan has left to Al Batin for £4 4.3 million. Koke is left to PSG for 12 million. Thomas Lamar is left to Al Ali for 7.5 million. And Kaglasi and Chu has left to Al Nassar for 3.8 million, raising about 100 million pounds. We do have some decent money to spend, and I think we're straight away changing the complete culture here at Echo Madrid, which is what I wanted to do. And our first signing is a free agent one of Adrian Bernabe. Now, recently I did a Parma rebuild, and this guy was absolutely fantastic. And as a backup CDM here, he's 23 years of age, happy to play a rotation rotational role, I'm happy to bring him in, including a brand new backup striker, Emmanuel Amega. This guy has been smashing it over at Strasbourg. Fantastic finishing, fantastic pace, 21 years of age, Dutch, and very, very interesting. I've never really seen him before, never really used him before, so I'm excited to give him a go because this is what this rebuild is about, finding new players, which hopefully are absolutely fantastic. Cash for Tobias, that's not a brand new name, but it's someone who has a backup goalkeeper to Jan or Black will be absolutely fantastic, and maybe in two, three seasons time, even overtakes him as our number one. He is an absolute bargain at the start of rebuilds with 2.5 million pounds is all it takes to get my Legia in Poland. So if you've never used him before, he could be your superstar goalkeeper. Eli Schiller has come in from FC Copenhagen, 11.75 million pounds, 21 years of old, Danish right wing back, which is going to be a rotation option with Marcos Lorente, who's going to play in that role as an inverted wing back because why not make it a little bit fun and interesting but hopefully Shilla can develop into being our starting right back down the line and my final signing and one for a fair bit of money into bringing a better younger centre back is Pierre Kalulu from AC Milan for just £26 million Kalulu comes in as one of the best young centre backs on the game and looks fantastic as well consistent lifting matches a fantastic teamwork pace first touch heading marking and tackling he comes in and he is brilliant which means our team is looking much improved 
improved. Yano Black in goal. Kalulu, Jimenez, and Hermoso as our back three. With Raquel May as the left wing back, Lorente as the right wing back. With a very exciting CDM partnership, which will be getting locked in for the start of this rebuild with Pablo Barrios and Arthur Vermeeren. Czech Batista, Griezmann in the cam with Morata and Angel Correa up front. Backups wise, we're looking at Cash for Tobias, Aspilicueta, Savage, and Ronaldo. Ejela, Benabe, Witzel and Samuel Lino with a front three of Depay, Emega and a very exciting Samu Amaraida Ryan. Now this guy on FM always, and I mean always, turns in to an absolute beast. He has currently got zero caps for Spain, zero goals. He is worth nine million pounds. He has got 13 finishing and looks very average. With this guy six foot four with 16 pace. And then this match engine... He's going to be quite good. So we'll enjoy some Samu Amor and Ryan gameplay throughout the rest of this rebuild. But let's get into season number one. I'm expecting to be just about behind Atletico, not Atletico Madrid, Real Madrid and Barcelona. But I think we're going to be good enough to go ahead and topple the rest of the league and close that gap massively while using quite an exciting different fun formation so let's get into season one well a simply fantastic start to the season got us off with a 5-2 victory over Alaves a 3-0 against Mallorca a 1-0 against Espanyol and carrying on that winning run against Villarreal Lejanes and a 1-0 victory over title rivals Barcelona in the first six games we'd won them all and we're unbeaten for another three a 3 draw against Atletico Bambologna a 0-0 against Getafe and a 3-0 victory against Athletic Bilbao followed up by our first loss against last season's Giants Girona a 2-0 loss, which was absolutely heartbreaking. We then followed it up with a 3-2 victory over Levante and a 4-1 against Sevilla. At home, a fantastic result. Goals from Memphis Depay, Rodrigo Raquel May, Pierre Kalulu, and Elias Yeller. And then we got battered 4-0 by Celta Vigo. What a topsy-turvy season this has been so far. A 3-0 victory over Las Palmas, a draw against Real San Sebastian, and losing to Real Madrid. Beating uh, Real Hispalas and then drawing to Valencia. A decent start to the season. Three losses, four draws, the rest victories. We're looking about in that top four position, but Madrid and Barcelona were certainly clear. So we had to make a stand, and in January, three wins out of three. Valencano, Mallorca, and Espanyol fell to the Atletico Madrid sword, and then a shocking February. Losing to Villarreal, losing to Atletico Pampolonia, beating Alaves, but drawing to Barcelona, and March was no different. One win, one draw, and two losses. The exact same as February. Luckily, in April, we picked things up with victories over Lejanes, Vigo, Las Palmas, Getafe, and drawing to Real San Sebastian, before losing to Real Madrid and Real Hispalas, and beating Valencia, and that Real Valencano meant our season was okay. Very topsy-turvy, but the Spanish division ended up with us in fourth place behind Valencia on 77 and miles off Real Madrid and miles off Barcelona as Real Madrid win the title on 91 points. We didn't really have any standout players. Antoine Griezmann with eight pound matches was okay, fairly decent, but no one scoring loads of goals, no one smashing the overraging, no one smashing the assists. Things certainly had to improve. And that was the case on the goal scoring charts as well. Just 69 goals scored this season. Possession wise, down on 55%, and fewest conceded, just 40 conceded, which was so much more than Barcelona and Real Madrid, even though we were the third best team. It just shows how clear them two are the top and how much of a way we have got to go to close that gap. But next up is the Champions League, and it's the first season of it being at the Europa League phase. And when we got off to an awful start, losing 3-1 to PSV, beating Leipzig 3-1, losing to Dortmund 2-0, beating Antwerp 2-1, Losing to Barcelona, 2-0. Losing to Inter Milan, 4-2. Beating Shakhtar and beating OGC Nice. But with that topsy-turvy start, it did mean we're down in 17th place in the league phase, meaning we had to go through the knockout playoff rounds. And we got off to a simply fantastic start. We're in just three minutes. A fantastic pass from Pablo Barrios found Antoine Griezmann to make us 1-0 leaders against Ajax in the knockout playoff round here in the Champions League. A break ball in from Mansverk finds Taylor to make it 1-0, however, and they're going to go away. The victory, 2-1. Berghaus. We were losing to Ajax and we had to now go away from home. And in just four minutes, things looked even worse with Steven Bergwijn and Windell linking up to that left-hand side. And a fantastic finish from Bergwijn made it 1-0 in three minutes. But we were going to have a fantastic end to this tie. Some great link-up play, some great positional play there. And Raquel made on the left-hand side gets open to make it 2-1, well 1-1 one, one on the night. And Ajax going to make it 2-1 on the night. Sanchez a ball in. Bergwijn heads it past Oblak and we are losing again. Luckily for us. Witzel steps up from the penalty spot and even more lucky for us just 15 minutes later they get a red card. 
And the goals are going to come. Bernabe fires Yeller. He fires it in the 85th minute. And in the 93rd minute, an Antoine Griezmann corner. Not quite heading 21. Kalulu finds Griezmann again. Our magic man makes it 4-2. And we scrape past Ajax in the knockout playoff round. And if it wasn't going to be any harder, we faced PSG in the round of 16. Where we drew 1-0 in the first leg and got battered in the second leg. 3-0 with goals from Gonzalo Ramos, Kylian Mbappe and Xavi Simmons. So the Champions League was also over. And while the Spanish Cup may look fantastic with a big, big victory over Yatebio, CD Marino, Mirandes and an extra time victory against Almeria, we got battered 4-0 by Real Madrid. Really showing the golf in the two teams. Atletico Madrid, a decent side. We're tra transitioning into a brand new style of play, a brand new tactic, brand new players, youngsters coming up. For Real Madrid, just that absolute superstar team who have some of the best players in the world. So this rebuild, as much as it's going to be fun, we're going to sign players we want to go in and sign. It's going to be extremely difficult to topple the top two sides. We have got £81 million to spend and £800,000 in wage budget. So that should be quite helpful. And in terms of our stand-up performance this year, Antoine Griezmann in that cam role was simply great. 22 goals and 15 assists, showing you can get something out of a Trek Batista on this game with the right players. Morata 19 and 4, Memphis Depay 15 and 8, and Andrew Correa just 10 and 5. Samum or Maridigan had a great breakout season, 9 goals and 4 assists. Arthur Vermeer and 5 goals and 10 assists looks to be progressing very well, as does Pablo Barrios. 3 goals, 9 assists, both of our DMs over a 7 average rating is simply fantastic. Not getting as many assists from the wing backs as I'd like, 9 from Marcus Lorente, and uh, I can't tell where the left wing back is, in fact, Raquel May with just 4, so not the most of assists coming from the wing back roles either so we're really looking for them central positions to go ahead and improve and with that 81 million hopefully we can do it i'm gonna have to do it with some big names leaving as well so left to last palmas for six million memphis to pie to leipzig for 350k samuel lino to al batin for 1.3 million andrew correa for 1.2 million to al wader morata for 1.8 million to al nassar and stefan savic to freiburg for 70k now it seems to be a thing for some reason this rebuild players are ridiculous cheap and it's not just my players now i've never really managed in spain so i don't know if spanish players are just very cheap but even when signing players a lot of them were very very cheap other than jonathan david who cost me 39 million from Lille, but he looks absolutely fantastic and will be our superstar striker next to his good mate matteo retegui from genoa this guy i never signed an fm but i have wanted to for a long old time he has a fantastic story of going over to argentina when he was younger and uh, he was a real breakout star a couple of years ago has started to make some appearances for Italy as well and he's now signed for Genoa in real life and he's had a great season last season here on FM at Genoa scoring 16 goals and getting four assists and this season he comes to Atletico Madrid to partner with Jonathan David for 20 million pounds. Samson Beidou comes in from RB Salzburg for 16.5 a wonder kid centre back who looks brilliant. Elias Akamak from Villarreal cost us just 6 million pounds and the quality of this man is unquestionable and he was just 6 million. Max Fingerafi from Köln cost us 4.5 one and Ladislav Kreki from Sparta Prague was a free signing cost us just £65,000 in little odds and sods but as a backup DM this guy is fantastic Sparta Prague have loads of good one kids and Ladislav Kreki is a great DM to sign and uh, Ali Jassim has also been signed from Al Quea Al Jawaya he is a free signing from there and he looks absolutely brilliant as well very fast great flair and great dribbling I've never seen him before he was simply someone I'm very interested in getting in and loading out very consistent a very exciting young player who I hope can develop into something down the line with this Atletico Madrid side. Now for this season, I've kept the exact same system, but I've gone from a balanced mentality into positive, going a little bit more fast in the playing ability, focusing playing on the middle and being more aggressive. So Oblak in goal, Kalulu, Jimenez and Beda as our back three, with Lorente, Barrios, Vermeeran and Raquel May as the four in front, with Griezmann, David and Retuegui as our front three. Tobias, Azpilicueta, Witzel, Hermoso, Yella, Bernabe, Kreki, Fingrafi, Akamak, Omega and Samu Moraida and make our backup 11 as well we're sort of progressing in the ages to make it a hell of a lot younger very very exciting team as well so hopefully season two we can move away from fourth and get that top spot and work the same as last season we got off to a fantastic start victories against Ibar, Cadiz, Mallorca and Las Palmas and Elche at the start of September losing our first game to Catafe 2-1 but getting back on that winning horse against Vigo, Villarreal, Alaves, Real Sebastian, Valencia 
Athletic Bilbao and Girona. We had a very easy start to the season. And uh, as soon as we started playing some bigger teams, yeah, it started to crumble down. A 3-0 loss to Real Espalas before beating Barcelona, beating Levante, losing to Madrid, losing to Sevilla, beating Cadiz, losing to Ybar, and drawing to Mallorca. I mean, actually a decent start to the season. Well, a fantastic first 10 to 15 games, but the second half of the first half of the season was absolutely awful. And well, February, we kept up that same run as well, beating Las Palmas and Velencano for losing to Getafe, drawing to Vigo, beating Alaves, Real San Sebastian, Valencia, Girona, Real Espalas, and Villarreal, and losing Losing to Barcelona, drawing to Elche, beating Valencano, losing to Bilbao, beating Levante, drawing to Real Madrid, and beating Sevilla on the final day of the season. Overall, a much more consistent year this season in the Spanish league. 82 points, a 43 goal difference. Just a bit behind Real Madrid and Barcelona, but they are absolutely cooking. Uh, just nine points in total. They both finished on the same, both on 91. And uh, funny to see Shemel Gilkashoy here at Barcelona smashing it. Lumine Yamal the exact same. So it looks like Barca are going for the Wonderkid 11, which is pretty awesome to see. Gilkashoy and Fatty up front. Pedri, Torres, De Jong, Laboca, Balde, Marmol, Christensen, Kunde to Stegen. But uh, Gavi, Lamina, Yamal, 11 and 17. What a season. He's has Mark Benaus here as well. Vitor Roque, Alex Vale, Rodrigo de Paul. Obviously, we've sold him there as well. So some of the youngsters through Barcelona's academy are absolutely cooking and proving very difficult to catch up upon. And I've actually beat Real Madrid to the title. And this Real Madrid team as well is full of superstars. Courtois, Cadioglu, Rudiger, Alaba, Mendy, Zumendi, Chumani, Camavinga, Brahim Diaz, Rodrigo, and Vinicius Jr. But they've also got the likes of Bonguinho, El uh, Enyseri, Valverde, Endrick, Ardegula, um, Luka Modric. I mean, where's Jude Bellingham gone? Jude? Hang on a second. Has Bellingham left Madrid? I've never seen this in my life. Has he gone? <gasps> Jude Bellingham's left Madrid. I've never seen this in my time playing FM. Jude Bellingham has left Real Madrid for 93 million. Are they okay? I've never seen that ever. Well, hopefully we don't play them in the Champions League and this season we didn't. We may have lost 5-2 to Real Madrid anyway. Beat Juventus 2-0, lost 4-1 to Newcastle, lost 4-0 to Spurs. Beat Man City 2-0, beat Final 4-3, beat Reims 5-2, drew 1-0 to Galatasaray, which meant we're in the knockout playoff rounds against Rangers, who we absolutely smashed over two legs and scored some fantastic goals along the way as well. Yellow found Barrios with an absolute screamer from 25 yards on and off the crossbar. Cantwell, Radvan and Rabbi Matondo whips one in to Danilo. Matondo should have shot himself. Did anyone see that absolute screamer against Celtic? Well, anyway, Danilo scored to make it 1-1. Witzel then finds Yellow on the left-hand side. He's He's going to beat his man. He's going to drive it in. And Griezmann's there to tap past Butland to make it 2-1 away at Ibrox. But a third was coming. Retegui found Yella, who's playing the left-hand side this side. Finds a great ball through to Mattia Retegui, whose attacking intelligence is fantastic. He makes it 3-1. And the home leg was much the same as well, with Kalulu and Yella linking up down the right-hand side to find Retegui yet again. The exact same as the other goal, just reversed. Right to left. Fantastic goal to make it 4-1 in aggregate. It's going to come 4-2 with a uh, Lanislav Krecki header to make it sorry 5-1 before Danilo then drives on the right hand side he beats his man cuts it back to John Lundstrom scoring a Champions League goal it wasn't enough it was 5-2 and we're through to the round of 16 Barcelona is up next and well again a 0-0 draw in the first leg and losing by just one goal in the second with goals from Araujo, Semi Gulkashoi and Noah Darvich while Witzel and Samu Moraida and scored for us. Sadly, we're 3-2 losers now the Champions League in the round of 16 in back-to-back -back seasons. But could we win the Spanish Cup? Well, we beat Andorra in the third round and Gijon in the fourth, beat Valencano in the quarterfinals and went the semi-finals up against Valencia where we drew 1-0. We beat 3-1 in the second leg, second final against Barcelona. Could we get our revenge in this one well Ladislav Krecki links up with Sergio Diaz on the right hand side of fourth fire and one past in Yaki Pena I think Barcelona are taking the mick in this one using the backup team Gavi on the ball finds Jules Kuhn in the right hand side to find Pedri finds Lobotka and he fires one in from 20 yards and that's 1-1 in 44 minutes and with this well I, I did say backup team because their keeper was different it's clearly not because Ansu Fati makes it 2-1 in 57 minutes but we weren't done. Hermoso and Elias Ikemak link up to the left-hand side to find Raquel May, who finds the ball back to Bitzel to Imega to make it 2-2. Two, two. But the 120th minute, of course, Barcelona getting that Barcelona luck. I'm sure Vitor Roque was offside there, but apparently he wasn't. And even VAR checked it. Not that that means anything, but it makes it 3-2 to Barcelona. And we've lost in the final to them 
again, absolutely shocking. The standouts this season were exactly who you'd expect. Retegui, Jonathan David and Samu Amarida run with Griezmann taking a tiny step back with just 10 goals and 15 assists. And looks like Jonathan David is going to be sitting in that cam role with Retegui and Amarida run up front in the future. Lorente, Krecki, Witzel, Raquel, Mangiela were also fantastic. Rogella also getting 21 assists, which is fantastic. But the team still needed a lot of improvement and it was time to change formation. 4-1-2-1-2 is the way we were going for the next season we do have lots of money to spend 55 million pounds in fact and we're linked to a hell of a lot of players already so let's get into the next season well we sold absolutely no one because we have no one to sell of any decent value so 55 million pounds was to be spent and we spent 43 of it two free signings number one Lazar Samantovic from Udinese is always there I tried not to sign him all the time because he's always so so good but in this rebuild why enough not we've got big steps to make on Barcelona and Real Madrid Fakunde Medina was up next on a free contract from RC Lens, and I've never signed him. He looks absolutely brilliant, and he's free in season three. So welcome him in. Zaydu Sanusi comes in as our backup left back to Raquel May for 15 million pounds. Enzo Sterna, one of the best new wonder kids, comes in from Marseille for 16.25 million pounds. A bit of a different signing. Yassid Adli joins from AC Milan for 7 million pounds, and Enoch Masteras comes in from 11 million pounds from AZ Alkmaar. A fairly reserved transfer window, but bringing in some players that I'm sure are going to make a massive difference. Like Yano Black, Jella, Kalulu, Beidou, and Sanusi as the back five. Vermeeran and Lorente, Barrios, Samanzovic, David, and Retegui. The backups of Tobias, Masteras, Jimenez, Medina, Vingarafe, Kreki, Adli, Raquel May, Akabak, Griezmann, and Samu Omoraideran makes a very strong Atletico Madrid side and a very different, exciting formation. Double Metzalas, Shadow Strikers, wing backs on attack. We mean business. We are no longer sitting back. We are going for it. Atletico Madrid, the new attack inside in Spain. Well, of course, we had a great start to the season because it's what we do every single time. This time, though, against Real Madrid, 3-1 victors, a brace from Rotegui and a goal from Samu Araideran. We drew to Athletic Bilbao, beat Elche 4-0 and drew to Mallorca. Beat Alaves, Tenerife and Real San Sebastián, make it unbeaten first seven games and a fantastic start. We beat Villarreal and Espanyol up next, drew to Vigo and then lost to Girona 3-2, but went back to being unbeaten for quite a while. We beat Granada 2-1, beat Levante, Sevilla 5-0 with a Samu Amorida and a hat-trick. We drew to Vallecano, beat Getafe 2-1, drew to Barcelona 1-0, and beat to Valencia 4-2. The first half of the season was in the books, and Samu Amorida had shown himself as one of the best Spanish strikers and worldwide strikers we'd ever seen. Now a world-class player, 18 caps for Spain, 8 goals for them, and he scored 15 to start the season here as well. And we just carried on being fantastic after a little bit of a ropey January. We beat Real Espalas 3-1, drew to Fleck Bilbao, and lost to Real Madrid. We then beat Elche 5-1, Alaves 1-0, Mallorca 5-1, Tenerife 4-0, Villarreal 3-1, Vigo 2-1, Girona 3-1, Real San Sebastian 3-0, Granada 4-0, Levante 3-0, Lost Sevilla 3-0, beat Valencado 7-0, beat Espanyol 4-2, Getafe 1-0, Barcelona 2-1, Valencia 1-0, and Real Espalas 3-1, showing a completely dominating season, I thought, until I realised we won the league. Level 1 points of Barcelona, both on 93, and the only reason we won was due to our head-to-head -head record against Barcelona unbelievable such a tight season i thought we walked the league by at least five to ten points a fantastic season where sammy and scored 26 goals in the league alone and got a 7.47 average rating lamina yamal a 7.61 absolutely mental what a season a toe-to-toe -to -toe season where simply we just were fantastic over the course of it Barcelona scored the most goals held the most possession conceded the least goals but points per game the number one team Atletico Madrid the head-to-head -head record comes in clutch and we pit Barcelona to the title could we go ahead and win a Spanish Cup and a Champions League to make it even better well for the first time we actually started well in the Champions League beating Porto and Napoli losing to finals beating Wolves Wolfsburg, Benfica and Milan losing to Villa and drawing to Lens. Sadly, it meant we weren't going to be in the knockout playoff round because we had finally finished in the top eight just about finishing an eighth, but we're there, which means we're straight in to the round of 16. We're of course in the first leg, we lose to Borussia Dortmund 3-2. But then beat them 3-1 at home with a late goal from Antoine Griezmann sending us into the quarterfinals. When we got battered 5-3 
against RB Leipzig. And these German teams are proving quite difficult until they come to Spain. And uh, we kill all hopes and dreams over here. Retegui finds a great ball to Jonathan David to make it 1-0 in eight minutes. And that is the first of a whole host of goals. Bernabe finds Marcus Lorente, who finds Yella to find Retegui at the back post to get his first of the game and his second goal contribution with an assist also. Jimenez then the 78th minute finds Bernabe and make a head against the crossbar and Retegui's there to poke home in the 78th. We are now ahead in the game by one goal and uh, we want to make that a couple more don't we Kalulu, Retegui, Omega great finish to make it 4-0 on the night and we want a fifth and Retegui well he wants a hat trick I'm telling you this guy is fantastic a great ball through from Vermeeran he absolutely blasts it home 5-0 here in Spain and Leipzig have been beaten 8-5 on aggregate but it was a quick fire double over in Italy from Inter Milan with Marcus Aram and Lautaro Martinez making it incredibly difficult to come back and win it. Losing 2-1 at home as well. Yano Monserrate scores a goal, but Pavard and Caleb Acoli make it 4-1 on Aragut to Inter Milan. And sadly, we still had to wait for that very first Atletico Madrid Champions League. And with the Spanish Cup, again, we were fantastic. We beat Real Irún, Almeria, Oviedo in the semi-finals, a double-legged affair against Alaves, beating them 1-0 and 5-1. Barcelona again stood in our way. And of course, it's going to be a difficult game, but it doesn't get helped by in the 30th minute, one of your best players, Antoine Griezmann, gets a straight red card. And when in the 10th minute, we went 1-0 down already, so we're already off to a bad start. Sanusi then whips one in to uh, Griezmann at the back stick, but Samu leaves above him to make it 1-1. One -one. They're going to go ahead and get a second room of spot from Ronaldo Rujo and that's when the red card came as well so 2-1 Barcelona at this point they're going to go and make it 3-1 De Jong, Gavi, Yamal, Pedri unbelievable play and at Barcelona made it 3-1 we are going to get one back in the 76th minute showing we weren't no rollover Jimenez and Kalulu linking up to find Jonathan David at the back post but sadly that was all she wrote we lost 3-2 and Barcelona won the Spanish Cup 3-2 again against us overall quite a successful season the Spanish Super cup again losing to Real Madrid we've shown that every single year but the Super Cup is not really something I'm interested in the Spanish Cup I want to win the Champions League I want to win we did win the actual Spanish League which is fantastic but it was bloody close 93 points level with Barcelona next season I want to try and break clear and get another one as well so we want to try and get three in a row we've got to win every single one from now until the end of the rebuild 72 million pounds to spend we'll have some fun and improve this team so we spent over 100 million, 40 of it on Danny Vivian from Athletic Bilbao, who is a fantastic young centre-back. Sheikh Decore from Crystal Palace cost us 23.5 million pounds. Yadon Oosterveld from Fenerbahce cost us 28. And Andre from Fluminense cost us 14.5 million pounds. We shored up the back line, we shored up the midfield positions, and the team is looking much stronger, much younger, and much better. All black, Yella, Kalulu, Vivian, Oosterveld, Decore, Andre, Barrios, and David Tegui and Samu up front. Now a four and a half star player, as mentioned earlier. Tobias, Masaras, Beidou, Medina, Sanusi, Vermeer, and Lorente, Raquel May, Akamak, Griezmann, and Lazar Smarzovic. The team is incredibly strong, and I think now is the time to break away from Real Madrid and Barcelona. Well, guess what? Goals galore to kick the season off with a whole host of wins again. Alaves, Sevilla, Belencano, and Real San Sebastian being dispatched of. We can't keep the ball at the back of the net, though. We beat Espanyol, but they lost 4 2 to Valencia. Finally, a game we don't concede. 5-0 against Mallorca, 4-1 against Vigo, and a 0-0 draw against Girona, who will throughout this rebuild have been an absolute pain for us to beat. We then beat Almira 4-1, Levante 3-0, Villarreal 3-0, Granada 2-0, Cadiz 4-1, Gijon 3-0. We drew 1-0 to Real Madrid and drew 0-0 to Athletic Bilbao. Just one loss to kick the season off and three draws. A brilliant first half. And kicking off the second with a 0-0 draw against Barcelona, losing 1-0 to Real Espalas. Great. We then beat Sevilla 4-1, Alaves 2-0, drew 1-0 to Belencano, lost 2-1 to Real San Sebastian. We then went on one of them runs again. We beat Espanyol 2-1, Mallorca 2-0, Vigo 3-1, Girona 4-1, finally dispatching of them. 6-1 against Almeria and 5-1 against Levante. Just the clean sheets aren't happening. A 1-0 loss to Villarreal, a 3-0 draw against Granada, 2-1 win against Valencia, 4-1 against Cadiz, 3-1 against Gijon, beating Real Madrid 1-0, beating Athletic Bilbao 2-0, beating Barcelona 2-1 and drawing 2-0 to Raul Espalas on the last day of the season. Now remember last season, level with Barcelona, beat them on head-to-head -head games. This season we drew 0-0 against them and we beat them 2-1. And guess what? 
that made us winners on goal difference. Well, head to head again, 88 points. They smashed us on goal difference. But yet again, that head to head record comes in clutch. A 0 0 draw, a 2 1 win. And somehow we'd won the Spanish Cup again. I don't know how we keep doing it, but just scraping through on that head to head record. We can't break clear, but seven points clear of Real Madrid, level on points of Barcelona in back-to-back -back seasons. Atletico Madrid have won the league to back-to-back -back seasons for not only the first time in their history, but they're doing very, very well. Retegui and Amoridium both on 20-plus goals this season as well. It's brilliant. With Jello with 13 assists, Lamina Yamal is proving a thorn in our side. He is just absolutely fantastic. In terms of team overview, like I said, goal difference-wise, Barcelona are absolutely smoking us, but we are doing very well. We're keeping the we're doing well on points per game and we're just beating them in the big games it's Barcelona bottling it against these smaller teams and that is not my issue can we now lift the Champions League well it's going to be the round of 16 again as we smashed through Slavia Prague drew to Chelsea lost to Spurs but then went very well against a 5-0 over Bodo Glimt another victory over Barcelona drawing to Bayern beating Besiktas and smashing Rakao and in the league phase we finished in eighth place five victories two draws and one loss 22 goal scored the eighth place is Atletico Madrid and it was Chelsea in the round of 16 away from home up first and that man of last season Matteo Retegui is going to have a fantastic game yet again a great ball in there from Marcus Lorente he pokes it home for 1-0 in the first half as soon as the second half kicks off he's there again at the back stick open like I said his attack and intelligence seem to be Unlike many players you see on FM, he seems to be absolutely brilliant. Just a shame Chelsea are also quite good. Florian Verts fires at home to make it 2-1. And Stamford Bridge got the second goal as well to make it 2 all Colonel Mbwane down the right-hand side. He gets it back into Nkunku. Sadly, we had to do it all at home again. Luckily for us, there was life in the old dog yet. Antoine Griezmann is about 35 years of age at this point and scoring braces in the Champions League. He is simply brilliant. There, a screamer from 25 yards. Jella then drops it to the edge of the box. He's there again, just in space to poke it past Petrovic. 2-0 on the night. Let's go ahead and make it free. Jella tried to find Samu at the front post. He then gets it down again, finds Smardovic, who I said is brilliant. And of course, the free agent signing gets another one. We are going to attempt to bottle this foe. Or Drago tries to find Yorkers at the back stick. Caicedo blasts at home to make it 3-1 on the night and a two-goal difference. And in the 65th minute, well, they really tried, didn't they? Because the ball in, Yorkers gets it down. He finds Enzo in the box, makes it 3-2. 5-4 and aggregate. Luckily for us, that is how it finished. The round of 16 is in the books and the quarterfinals were calling off Letico Madrid's name up next. And we were staying against a London side, but we had the first leg this time. And Retegui, well, of course, he got the first goal again because that's just what he does. Barrios and Griezmann link up again and Griezmann finds a fantastic pass to Samu and whose finishing is unquestionable. In the 22nd minute, we have a two-goal lead. In the 31st, Arsenal are going to get one back. Havertz finds Saka and he drives it home for 2-1. And it was time to take it back away from home against Arsenal. Can we go to the Emirates and try and keep this lead? We're just 26 minutes in. Barrios is going to give us a good old chance of doing it. Yellow finds him on the edge of the box and he puts it in the top corner past Conan and we were two goals clear and it took Arsenal all the way to the 89th minute with Thiago Gouvier, who I'm guessing is a region, making it 1-1 on the night. 3-2 to us on aggregate and that is all they had in the locker. Guess what, folks? Semi-finals, England again. This time, Manchester City. And well, lucky for us, they were absolutely rubbish. They absolutely bottled this one. Andre making it 1-0 in just eight minutes away from home at the empty ads. It was a pretty good start. You can see all the Atletico Madrid fans there. Then blue ones are also Atletico Madrid fans. Trust me, because they ain't going to be City ones. Sam with the back stick makes it 2-0 for Jonathan David. Makes it 3-0 from the spot in 51 minutes. And then Decore on the edge of the box fires it in for 4-0 here at the empty ad. And at home, a very similar story. Ustavirald was at the back stick to make it 5-0 on aggregate before a mistake at the back. Jan Kuto and uh, Ruben Diaz trying to link things up. Well, they're going to be absolutely punished for that. Samu makes it 2-0. And we're going to see another sad little mistake for Ruben Diaz. He loves own goals, apparently. He already just sort of set us up there. And now he's going to make an own goal as well. Thank you very much, mate. That's 7-0 on aggregate. We'll give you a pity goal back because, you know, you're allowed that one. Jan Kuto finds the ball to Julian Alvarez, who... 
I'd very much like to start on the rebuild in the future. Makes it 3-1. But 7-1 on aggregate. We were going into a final. We'd faced all English teams up until now. But the final was AC Milan. And with this one, there was no starts for Ategui or Omeriderun. As they were absolutely battered from the long league season. So David and Omega stepped up to make it 1-0 in 28 minutes. Before Bruno Fernandes finds Joshua Zerxi. Who I tried to sign before getting Ategui. I'm glad I did actually. Uh, before Belenova makes it 1-0. And we head to the dreaded penalties where Bruno Fernandes misses. He should have done the old hop, skip and jump of black saves. Smarzovic scores to make it 1-0. Tio Hernandez misses. Oh, Black is an absolute demon at penalties, apparently. Raquel May makes it 2-0, and it'll be difficult to bottle it from here. Charles de Ketelaire does score against Old Black. Emegavo gets the final penalty, puts it in the bottom corner, 3-1. They do miss the final penalty. FM always does this little bug. Cristiante misses that one. We've won on penalties, and the Champions League comes back to Madrid, but this time for the first ever time to Atletico Madrid. Sadly, we can't make it a cup double, as in the Spanish Cup. We lost in the quarterfinal to Vigo 2-2 but genuinely I couldn't care less we've won the Champions League for the first time in Atletico Madrid's history and for the next goal is to win the Spanish League for three times in a row which will be the first in their history they've done twice a couple of times but never three times so that is the goal right now and maybe another Champions League because why on earth not they've you know provided us with a little bit of money to get us there just 152 million and 600k in wage budget so uh, let's have a nice bit of a, a last season blowout shall we three big stats was this season Sanusi to Fenerbahce for 4 million, Marcus Lorenze to Al Fateh for 3, and Gianna Black to Al Ali for 2 million pounds. Meant a rebuild in goal, a midfield, and left back was needed. So Guillermo Restes was the signing in goal, 44 million pounds. A fantastic young goalkeeper that, again, I never really signed because he's always so good. How about Cold Palmer? From Sevilla for £47 million. This man is ice cold. He scores penalties all the time. But hopefully for us, he can be better than that. And he comes in here at Atletico Madrid to be our dominating cam. Yasser Orucci comes in from Troy to be our brand new left back up left back for £14 million. And Ori Stein Eskerson from Copenhagen for £25 million. Comes in as a backup striker. As the team is now in full form. It is completed and it is beautiful. Restes in goal. Yella and Ustervold as the backup well as the starting wing backs with Kalulu and Vivian in centre back, Andre in DM, Smartovic, Barrios, and Cold Palmer in Cam, with Retegui and Samu Moradian up front. Tobias, Mastaras, Beidou, Medina, and Larucci as the backups. Vermeeran, Decore, Raquel May, Akamak, Oskarsson, and Jonathan David making the backup 11. A very strong overall squad. We have completely changed the Flatico Madrid from that defensive almost ratty team to watch to now a beautiful 4-1-2-1-2 flowing attacking title trophy winning team and hopefully for season five we can do the infamous three in a row well it's just known we'll start the season well so 5-0 against Levante 3-1 against Real San Sebastian 7-0 against Espanyol 1-0 against Villarreal 9-0 against Almeria 5-0 victory over Valladolid and a 5-0 loss to Barcelona I certainly hope it doesn't come down to, uh, you know, who's going to win out of us two bus Barcelona on head-to-heads because that's embarrassing. Uh, we beat Girona 4-1, Drew Granada 2-0, beat Atletico Babylonia 7-0, Vigo 3-1, Mallorca 2-0, Sevilla 4-1, Valencia 4-2, a Bilbao 4-2, Alaves 3-0, and then we had an awful December, drawing to Getafe, Real Madrid, and losing to Real Espalas 5-2. Overall, ups and downs, a fantastic start, followed by some batterings, and eventually, sadly, not sitting top of the table, so it's time to turn it around. Or lose 1-0 to Real San Sebastian. We then beat Levante 1-0. Drew 1-0 to Espanyol. Beat Valomaria 3-1. Beat Vigo 3-1. Beat Valladid 5-0. Which means against Valladid overall, it was 5-0 and 5-0. 10-0 in aggregate. We drew to Barcelona 1-0. So certainly can't come down to head-to-head -head against them. We beat Girona 2-1. Beat Granada 5-2. Villarreal 4-0. Pamplona 3-0. Mallorca 2-0. Sevilla 6-3. Lost 2-1 to Valencia. Beat Bilbao 2-1. Beat Alaves 3-0. Beat Getafe 3-0. And at this point, we were not top of the league. We were five points behind Real Madrid. And we have the second to last game of the season. And that man, Cole Palmer, or should I say Cold Palmer, decided to put Atletico Madrid on his back. He makes it 1-0 in 22 minutes. And makes it 2-0 in 44 minutes. Retegui pips it off Militao. He sets to the edge. And Cole Palmer... Apparently, he doesn't just score penalties. An absolute screamer there from him. In the, in the 51st minute, Cambiasso brings it clear to find Brahim Diaz, Valverde, Endrick, 
for 2-1 to Atletico Madrid. We would have won the Madrid derby. We beat Real 2-1. And if we were to win our last game of the season and Real Madrid drop points, we beat them on head to head again. Well, we done our job. A 4-3 victory over Real Hispalas. Goals from Yella to Omarida and Rotegui. And in the 93rd minute, our very first signing of this rebuild, Adrian Bernabe scored to make it 4-3. Did Getafe beat or draw against Real Madrid? No, they didn't. They lost 4-0. So we come second, Real Madrid win the league, and Getafe get relegated. So I suppose... I guess a win all round, really. I'm absolutely gutted. It's not three in a row, but a very good season. With Rotegui, 25 goals. Omaridi in 23. Gilkeshoy for Barcelona, 22. Back to us, Cole Palmer, 17. Average rating, Jaden Oosterville, 7.66. And 13, yes, 13 assists with seven pair of matches as well. A fantastic, fantastic signing. We fell just short of the Spanish division. And well, in the Spanish Cup, it was the same story. We beat Langero, beat Lejanes, but lost in the quarterfinals to Barcelona, which means over five years as Atletico Madrid won at manager, we haven't won the Spanish Cup once. Or the Super Cup, as we beat Real Madrid, but lost to Barcelona in the final of that one. So I guess domestically, pretty poor. We just win the leagues. Can we make it though? Back-to-back -back Champions Leagues. Well, we stormed through the league phase with victories of Fenerbahce, Barcelona, Monaco, PSG, Club Bruges and Slavia Prague. A loss to Arsenal and a draw to Borussia Mönchengladbach. Again, in that top eight, this time in fourth, and we meant business. The first leg against Napoli was a one-all draw, but the second, a 4-2 demolition with goals from Yella, Omoraidian, Kalulu and Barrios. And then the quarterfinals, we played Chelsea and lost 2-0. Lavia and Badia Chile were goal scorers. But you don't count Atletico Madrid out. Smartovic blasts through the Chelsea defence, cuts it across to Sammy Morida in the 40th minute, and Chelsea were down to 10 men as well. So the 58th minute, Kalulu puts it through to Samu yet again, and he fires it past Petrovic to make it 2-0. We just needed one goal. A free kick from Lazar Smartovic, 3-0, and we were into the semis against Liverpool. And well, of course, the first leg was at Juanfield, and in just 12 minutes, Dominic Sabozlai makes it 1-0, but we're going to change it from Juanfield to Atletico Madrid field. Palmer whips it in the back stick and Samu Moraidaran is there. And then Ustavirald is going to show that fantastic ball into Jonathan David. He cuts it back to Schick Decore, who puts it past Alison Becker, and it was 2-1 to the mighty Atletico Madrid. And in the home leg, where well, we were just as good, Jela found a ball to Smartovic. He cuts it back to Jaden Ustavirald in off the crossbar in the 32nd minute. It took Liverpool until the 88th to have any sort of response. So Boslai found Boo to Oscar Bob, who puts it into the top corner past Restes, but it was 1-1, which meant we was 3-2 in aggregate, and we're into the final again in the Champions League. The weirdest thing, against Milan again. Well, last season, it was penalties. Could this season we actually break clear? Well, Smartovic finds Cole Palmer to put it past Mike Manian in the 17th minute, and Adrian Bonave, he nearly had his story moment, scoring the 4-3 against Real Hespalas to make us wicked winners in the league. Well, this time, he does get the last goal of the rebuild. A 2-0 against AC Milan, and Bonave is the man to put it into the top corner, and Atletico Madrid are back-to-back -back Champions League winners. In a simply fantastic season for Moridian and a 30-year-old Rotegui, 35 goals and 9 assists for him. Cole Palmer, 23 and 16. David, 15 and 2. Ustavirald, 11 goals and 17 assists. And loads of assists come from Barrios, Smarzovic, Yeller and Bonabe as well. But there is a little bit left in this video. And that's because we're in the Club World Championship, and I'd like to win that as well. And we smashed through the league phase, beating Sundowns 4-0, Racing Club 2-1, and Inter Miami 2-0. For the second round, beating Leipzig 4-0, quarterfinals beating Final 2-0, and in the semi-finals, beating AC Milan yet again 2-1. But it was their Milan rivals, Inter, in the final. And in the 55th minute, Samu Omeriderun caps the rebuild off with a chest down, a put past the keeper, and Atletico Madrid with a club World Cup. We've won two Champions Leagues and two La Ligas as well. I hope you've enjoyed this bit of more of a relaxed, fun, tactical rebuild of Atletico Madrid while signing a lot of very fun players. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll speak to you next time.